asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. There's a story on the BBC, and I've just noticed it, and I had no intentions of talking about this, but I noticed this about five minutes ago, and it's made me laugh. It's given me belly laughs. You know those types of laugh. Do you know that sort of laughing that you do release just the tiniest bit of wee-wee? <laughs> Here's the story. Auschwitz rap. German Echo Music Prize scrapped in anti-Semitism row. Now there's a, a, a prestigious musical award in Germany called the Echo Prize. And it's given out every year. But not anymore. Because there has been an outcry over the handing of the Echo Prize to a rap duo, they have been accused of anti-Semitic lyrics. The rappers are called Kuliga and Farid Bang, and they won the Hip Hop Urban Prize for an album, and the album had verses comparing their muscles to an Auschwitz survivor. Now I've been racking my brains, dear listener, in the last few minutes. What could the lyrics have been? I can't beatbox. I'm going to sound like an old dad, dad dancing. I'm going to be embarrassing, white guy trying to beatbox. I can't do that. I can't do it. I can't do it. Mortifyingly embarrassing for me to do that. What could the lyrics have been? I'm so rich. I got my own driver. I'm twice as strong as an Auschwitz survivor. Was that it? I have no idea. Send me four lines that end in Auschwitz survivor. On Twitter, please. Can you do better than that? I'm so rich. I got my own driver. These muscles. No, no. Uh, I'm stronger than an Auschwitz survivor. I don't. It's crazy. Their lyrics were in no way insulting Jews. They were in no way denying the Holocaust. They just threw Auschwitz survivor into the mix. <laughs> I mean, it's brilliant, isn't it? But there'll be no more Echo Prize ever again. They've ruined it for everybody. Those bastards. Those lousy, selfish bastards. But in all seriousness, I found the lyrics. One of the tracks on their album includes the line, My body's more defined than those of Auschwitz inmates. That doesn't rhyme, but it must do in German. <laughs> and another line includes the words, I'm doing another Holocaust coming with the Molotov. Apparently this is clearly anti-Semitic, so... F- Bad enough, right? They could take the Echo Prize off these guys if it was anti-Semitic. But no, there'll never be any more Echo Prizes given out ever again. <laughs> it's just, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful world we live in. Wonderful world. The Windrush generation, let's talk about it very briefly. You know by now that Theresa May has apologised to Caribbean leaders. This is last week, of course, because of deportation threats made to the children of Commonwealth citizens who have lived and worked in the UK for decades, but some of them were recently told that they are living here illegally because of a lack of official paperwork. Now, this is because the Home Office didn't keep a record of these people who arrived between 1948 and 1971, didn't keep a record, and in April 2010, not in April, in 2010, landing cards belonging to those people were destroyed by the Home Office. Massive scandal. There has been virtue signalling to the moon about this by liberal, not liberal, uh, socialist, left-wing politicians. They love this, right? Anyway, we've said on the programme, this could be much ado about nothing. Find who burned the cards, fire them, and then give everybody a passport and full rights to stay in the UK. Simple as that, right? Anyway, but no, because... This issue is being used to attack the notion that we really do need to find out who has no right to be in the UK and then politely say to them, look, you don't have any legal right to be here. You're not working. Again, you're not a refugee. You're not an asylum seeker. You're just here. Maybe it's best if you went back to your own place. A lot of people would agree with that. As an Irishman, I really don't have any dog in that fight. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm an immigrant myself. So 
But I'm worried about this issue because the Windrush migrants should just be told, yes, of course, you should be staying here. You're entitled to stay here. End of story. But I'm worried they're using this to try and say that we shouldn't be, as I said already, looking to deport people who have no rights to be here. This came up at Prime Minister's Questions today. You will hear Jeremy Corbyn and then you'll hear the Prime Minister. Have a listen to this. It's interesting stuff. We're talking about the environment created by her as Home Secretary for six years when she knew full well, she knew full well of the problems the Windrush generation were facing. At last she's been forced to act upon it. Last week the current Home Secretary admitted the Home Office sometimes loses sight of the individual. Yet we now know that when she took over from a predecessor, her intent was to harden this cruel and misdirected policy, pledging to do so ruthlessly. A report last month by immigration officials stated the hostile environment measures were not even having the desired effect. The current Home Secretary inherited a failing policy and made it worse. Isn't it time she took responsibility and resigned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so Barrico, the Speaker, has to intervene and tell them to shut up. Then you'll hear Theresa May. The House must calm itself. We've got a long way to go and a lot of backbenchers' questions to reach. Let's hear the Prime Minister. Can I say to the right honourable gentleman that up and down this country, people want to ensure that the government is taking action against those people who are here in this country illegally, those people who are here illegally, because it isn't fair that people who work hard day in and day out, who contribute to this country, who put into the life of this country, are seeing people who are here illegally accessing services in the same way. Yes, but don't believe for a minute that Theresa May really cares about that. Interesting this, if you're going to destroy countries like Libya and Syria and Iraq and make innocent people homeless, you've got a duty of care to those people. So you're not talking about refugees and asylum seekers. Of course, it would be better if MI5, if MI6, I should say, the CIA and Mossad stopped sending lunatic jihadists into countries to destroy them. Then you wouldn't have a migrant flow. But as we do, you've got to look after those people. Simple as that. But there are people in this country with nothing. And there are people in various parts of this country who can't access vital public services because they are overwhelmed by people using those services who don't actually have a legal right to be here. Those people are not coming from war zones. They are not refugees or asylum seekers. So you can understand the argument that we, the country, should seek to minimise as best as it can the impact of illegal migrants on social services. Vital public services, I should say. That's a fair argument. But they're using the progressive cultural Marxists that we talk so much about are using the Windrush story as a way of saying, we've got to stop this witch hunt. There's no witch hunt because the government doesn't really want to get rid of, no, I shouldn't say get rid of, but to move out of the country. Folks who shouldn't be here, who, whose country is in another, well, it wouldn't be a European Union country, obviously, but elsewhere in the world, They shouldn't be here. They have no rights to be here. It's fair enough if those people are asked to go back to the point of origin, right? But it's never going to happen. The government doesn't really want to do that. This is all a a bit of a smokescreen. But the issue is being used by the progressive cultural Marxists to say we shouldn't be seeking out people and asking them to leave full stop. They would prefer that vital public services are absolutely overwhelmed. Ultimately, right? 14 minutes past the hour, got there in the end. Gerald Salente joining the programme very soon. Came across the story in the last hour or so. I don't think this is funny, by the way, and we're not crass enough on this programme to to be churlish, to mock people. But Kate Rothschild, banking heiress, was the victim of a burglary. It's being reported in the Telegraph newspaper today and also in the Daily Mail. 
and apparently over five hundred thousand pounds worth of jewellery was stolen. Banking heiress Kate Rothschild, her three and a half million pound home was burgled, and five hundred thousand pounds worth of jewellery was stolen. She's a bit of a black sheep of the Rothschild clan because she had a relationship with a black American rap star that couldn't have gone down well in Castle Rothschild. But it's interesting that the newspapers are trying to elicit some sympathy for her. Of course, y- you wouldn't wish it on anybody that they're robbed when they're in their homes. It must feel like a terrible invasion. It must feel very unnerving. But isn't it amazing? £500,000 worth of jewellery. The haves and the have-nots. Who has £500,000 worth of jewellery to begin with when people are starving? And it's not as if the woman did anything to earn it. Right? But I'm not going to go into a whole Rothschild banking family rant now. We've done too many of those on the programme. But it's being reported anyway, widely, that Kate Rothschild uh, had £500,000 stolen on her. Like I said, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Rothschild or anybody else. You know, the French President Emmanuel Macron is in the United States meeting with the US President. Maybe Gerald Salente will have an opinion or two on that. He has addressed Congress, has Emmanuel Macron, and he's used that speech to basically denounce nationalism and isolation, saying that the policies of nationalism and isolation were a threat to global prosperity. But he also said, and this is real round table stuff, Council on Foreign Relations stuff, he also said that nationalism and isolationism were also a threat to the environment. (laughs) Quite funny this, isn't it? Um, There's a 20 second clip of Macron basically saying there is no planet B. There's no planet B. Have a listen to uh, the French president. Oh, the Rothschild connection uh, playing its part in today's programme. Of course, former Rothschild banker Emmanuel Macron. By polluting the oceans, not mitigating CO2 emissions and destroying our biodiversity, we are killing our planet. Let us face it. There is no planet B. (laughs) Yeah. There's no planet B. We've got to stop all this nationalism and isolationism and all of that. We might get into that with Gerald. And finally, for the moment, at Prime Minister's questions today, the UK Prime Minister, Theresa May, was asked about Salisbury, where the Skripals were allegedly poisoned. Allegedly. And she was asked, is it safe? Is it safe, Prime Minister, for people to go to Salisbury? What with the news that... There is Novichok everywhere. Apparently there's Novichok everywhere in Salisbury. So is it safe now to go back? This was Theresa May's response to that. Well, can I thank my my honourable friend because he has raised an important issue and I'm very happy to update the House on on this issue. Oh, please update us now on this important issue, on the Novichok clean-up. Tell us, Theresa. And first of all, can I make it absolutely clear that Public Health England have said Salisbury is safe for residents and visitors. There's no need for anyone to take any additional precautions. Cordons are in place to protect the public while decontamination work is carried out on the sites that my honourable friend has referred to. And after decontamination is undertaken at each site, sampling will be carried out to ensure that the sites are safe to be released back to the public. But I can assure my honourable friend uh, that the need to expedite this work is well recognised, but we want, of course, to ensure that it is done in a way that that those sites will in the future be available to the public and will be safe for the public. Now, apparently, there are nine hotspots. May said today there are nine Novichok hotspots. So there's a new game show coming, it's called Jeopardy 2018. The public are challenged to find one of those nine hotspots. At each hotspot, there is a key. A key to a brand new Mercedes E-Class 2018 model. This is some load of bollocks, this, isn't it? I mean, isn't this just monumental bollocks? Nine Novichok hotspots. No, there isn't. There isn't. It's just one monumental lie that has 
It's not even falling apart anymore. It fell apart it fell apart three weeks ago. And yet they continue with the rubbish. We're cleaning it up. Uh, the Russians, uh, yeah, it's okay. It's safe now to go back in there. There was never any Novichok to begin with. Do you know, it was brilliant last weekend to hear Alexander Yakovenko, the Russian ambassador to the UK, lampooning, chastising, mocking the UK media for their failure to demand a face-to-face with the Skripals, just to confirm that A, they are alive and well, which I think they probably are, but B, they are operating of their own volition, that they are free to move around and do what it is they want to do, which I don't think they are. Crazy stuff this, isn't it? Crazy stuff.